All right, welcome in everybody. Uh, might not have many people here right off the bat. Might have a few trickling in from Vax stream once he's done. Uh, tonight we have the Sin Marduk match, and he's taking on two Nothrogs, uh, an Elf and a Free Kingdoms. I know it was um, uh, Beastmaster Eladric for the Free Kingdoms. I don't remember which Elf it was, but I know Fandrix was running it. Uh, really gave Sin Marduk a run for his money last match, so these Nothrog decks have been strong all tournament. I think there's a strong chance uh, that we see a really powerful match here and not just a uh, Overlord smacking down on the Peons. So let's see here. They're just getting set up. Let me switch my stream. There we go. Okay, and let me just make sure I didn't win the giveaway on Vax stream. I did not. Okay. Now full proceed with this stream. Sorry about that. So if you haven't watched uh, my other stream with uh, NH Irish Punk, uh, Sin Marduk starts with the Weeping Crescent equipped. Uh, it's the epic faction weapon that gives him plus 7 attack, plus 2 AC, an additional strike, and he can destroy it to ready the character. Sin Marduk, of course, being the Daemon Lord, says your daemons are not unique, much like a Dragon Lord, uh, and he can cast wizard spells. Uh, after he performs a melee strike or spell that kills... Uh, that kills... A daemon enters play from your hand in the formal location of the killed character, regardless of formation. So, no daemons that have stealth. Hey, Wizap in the chat. Glad you can make it, man. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, so, no uh, no daemons that have stealth, I believe. Um, so, I can't really take advantage of that. There might be, like, one, but it's going to be, like, a level three or something. But still going to be able to drop them in opposing formation. Then order once per turn, kill a Thrall, perform a melee strike that may target an additional rank away. So the one other Sin Marduk match I covered, Jodan Drax Secrets of the Suns to him uh, right away and took out his entire starting army. So he actually didn't have very many, uh, if any at all, Thralls that game to kill for that order. Uh, the other warlord is Savrak, who has survived the whole tournament up to this point, I believe. I, I think I watched a matchup with, with him in round one. Uh, if he's your warlord, all Nothrogs in his army have Spend React. When this character is targeted with a melee strike or action, move forward or backward one rank to cancel it. So essentially, uh, he just runs away. They can move forward, I guess, if they're targeted with a range strike, get some movement and cancel the strike, uh, but they're goblins, so they're just going to run away. Um, we see Kothka having a really powerful start here. So apparently Kothka also surviving the entire tournament because we see the Krun standard as well. That's something that's only awarded to the lieutenants, uh, and if they die, they don't get a new one, at least as far as I'm aware. So that gives them Charisma, and then React after one of your Nothrogs makes a successful melee strike roll. Spend the standard to make a Charisma check. If successful, the strike inflicts one extra wound. Uh, so those, those Nothrog combo decks that are hitting you for two to three wounds from the last rank, he can just make that even more powerful. That's really good. I think that uh, faction standard synergizes best with uh, the Nothrog than any other faction standard has this whole tournament. And then he has the Limited Wish as well, uh, along with Tome of the Adept. So I'm not sure which feat he is going to name, but Wad definitely has a really, really strong setup here. I'll hop back into the multiplayer split view now that they're starting. We see, we see Sin Marduk has two amends for strikes and then just uh, one plentiful to try and hold ranks. Um, the Secrets of the Suns got him last time, because I think Joden Drac had, like, uh, Monkey Paws or something like that, King's Lady, something along those lines for extra wounds, maybe just Gloves of Mercy. Uh, but he plowed right through that whole army. And then the Triclaw, uh, Triple Triclaw with Devoted Start. Uh, Devoted, obviously, as you know, Spend React, uh, you get another one, so it's not really a high incentive to attack it. And then the Triclaw are just going to pull Sin Marduk forward, so there's not a high incentive to attack them either. Um, but in this 2v1, obviously, he's going to be the only one they're going to be attacking. But uh, that starting army definitely putting pressure to make you not want to attack. Sin and Nock. This is a really interesting one. I don't think I've seen. Characters adjacent to him have plus one AC. So this is just like a wall hold rank start for the Nothrog. Gunda kind of does that as well with the plus one HP, but it still dies at end of turn. So Sinanok, that's a very intriguing start. 
And then we see the Elven Ambassador as Guttuk, whatever that is. Uh, that's probably just in there for the Lost Bride, uh, to try and get card draw, and maybe one or two copies of Hasimal as well for extra card draw. Since both of these decks are uh, first Warlord Nothrog decks, neither of them have been killed to go to the second Warlord, that means they are both going to be playing the combo, where they're going to be trying to get out Serene, and then Karachaguk, Kovic Razor, something like that. Uh, Kinag in there just as a two hit point rank holder, it looks like. Irish Punk starting early with the Annals of Triumph. Uh, so now Sin Marduk has every feat except for like two of them. Doesn't give power attack or magic resistance, it doesn't look like. I think those are the two it doesn't give. Um, and then Torin Iskar out of Icefall is well, or not, yeah, Icefall. I got the uh, Dragon mixed up with the Warlord, but that is his username, technically. Uh, so Torn Iskar going to play right into their draw, try and find what cards they need. Uh, probably going to see a lot of meat at the end. Like I said, Lost Bride. I'm frankly kind of surprised not all of the Nothrog decks are running uh, as Guttukuk uh, instead of Kinag here, uh, just to try and get Lost Bride, because, I mean, she still holds ranks, um, and she draws you cards, so... Uh, obviously just trying to hold ranks with the Kinag, though. Uh, Irish Punk gonna swing with the Triclaw, and it looks like it hit that Gunda. Uh, and then Gunda swung, rolled a 19, but I'm not seeing anything dead. So maybe I am mistaken on what that die rolls for. Another Triclaw gonna swing and miss. Plus 3 attacks, that's a 7. Not even gonna hit the 9 AC on the Gunda. There's the first meet at the inn out of Icefall, playing right into that card draw. Um, I know they're trying to draw a lot of cards and look for stuff, but the last thing I want to be doing right now is giving Sin Marduk more fodder. All he has to do is spend up and kill the Plentiful to kill a Gunda and drop Getroxus in your ranks, or Freistos, or Takaxorus, or whatever. I mean, he could even be running Utnapishtim if he's uh, that spiteful. And all you have to do as well is kill one Triclaw, and he's pulled forward and can use both amends this turn as well, presuming they aren't killed. Looks like Irish Punk is going to swing with the last Triclaw. Probably try and wound another Gunda would be my guess. Um, not trying to kill the wounded one since it'll just die at end of turn. Uh, or he is just going to go for that one. Okay. So trying to bust through their ranks early on turn one, not even playing for turn two at this point it seems. Irish Punk definitely off to an aggressive start here. I would think he'll probably hold up that Devoted for the Spend React, just in case they try and target it, because keeping that ready, um, it makes them maybe want to try and target the Triclaw instead. Once he spends it, they're definitely going to be going for that instead of the Triclaw, but uh, maybe he wants that. Who knows? We shall see. I didn't even look at Kothka either. He's a Barbarian, says, Order once to return look at the top five cards of your deck. Put one of them into your hand and discard the remaining cards. So that's another one that's going to try and dig for their combo pieces. Uh, and try and get the Serene, the Karachaguk. Or even like the King's Lady to equip to them uh, in rank 5 once they come in. Uh, looks like it's going to be back to Irish Punk here, I think. Oh no, Wad just discarded the Gunda. So it should be his turn because Icefall played me at the end. Let's see here. <clears throat> I have Woodrow spectating now, too. I'll bet that's what they were waiting for. I'm not sure what the delay is. I know Untap's been having issues pretty much this entire tournament, so it's also just possible that it's lagging hardcore right now, but I would assume not too much since we saw Woodrow join the chat. It's possible that they're just strategizing as well. Maybe ice fall and water talking to each other, trying to figure out uh, how to best handle Irish Punk here. Because he still has uh, four cards in hand as well. I would think if he had... Uh... Oh, he had a Devoted that he killed at one point. I missed that. 
Uh, I would think if he had more items, he probably would have thrown those on before swinging with the Triclaw. So unless he got one with Meat at the Inn, I would think that's probably all the items he has right now. But I could also be wrong. See him spending Sin Marduk. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, he's not moving him up. It doesn't look like... And I don't see a spend order. Okay, like I th uh, it was Wad's turn like I thought. So he plays a Cargreg. Now it's going to go back to Irish Punk. We'll see why he potentially spent Sin Marduk here, what that was about. Cargreg just going to come in and let him draw a card. Another one that's pretty strong with that Daybreak ability that I haven't really seen much play outside of this tournament. Uh, granted, most Nothrog decks I've seen aren't as draw-heavy as these ones have been. Um, so that's probably part of the reason they're more aggro, blitz-type decks. But it's, it's still a solid card that I feel like I've only ever seen it hit on Daybreak this tournament as well. They've gotten pretty lucky with that one. <coughs> now let's see here. It's back to Irish Punk. I'm not sure what he's doing here. Did Irish Punk just pass? I'm still not sure why Sin Marduk is spent. If anyone in chat knows, let me know, but I'm not seeing anything in a discard pile that would indicate that. We see a portable hole onto Savrock, so clearly they went past uh, Irish Punk. And now a Shadow Reaver for Kothka, so Irish Punk must have passed again. Still four cards in hand. I wonder if a lot of those are just higher level daemons he can't play right now. I'm just so confused why he's spent, though. There's nothing that I see that would have done that. So he just discarded the Weeping Crescent to ready. So he can at least move up to rank 2 this turn. Okay, so he discarded the Weeping Crescent so he can equip the Gyrar Heirloom as well. Um, I mean, I would have thought he would move up and discard the Weeping Crescent to ready. Then he can get up front and use Amends to do a couple full, full-blown full attacks this turn. But, I mean, nothing in discard pile that I see that would have caused him to spend in rank 3. I would have thought, like, in Exhaustion or something. Uh, Savrock is going to discard the portable hole for a card, uh, opting not to move with it first. Kothka going to spend Shadow Reaver up to rank 2 just to try and help hold those ranks, um, which means he probably has another level 4 coming in. Uh, who's the level 4 Nothrog that can play actions from the discard pile? I forget his name, but they use that in these decks to play uh, Loyalty's Reward again. Sin Marduk going to move up to rank 2. Bokos, that's the name. Thank you. Let me see. Oh, man. Secrets of the Suns out of rank two. So he can take out both of these front ranks and drop as many daemons as he wants as well. Although the Gunda, not going to uh, be killed this turn. Let's take a look at his weapon, Gyrar Heirloom. So an additional melee strike when he attacks. So that puts him at four. And after performing a melee strike that killed, perform a plus six range strike. So normally that's going to be hitting into rank two, but since he's doing the melee strike from the second rank, those are still going to be hitting the first rank. So he actually can take out Gundas. And let's take a look at Annals of Triumph again, just to familiarize ourselves with these feats. That does give him marksmanship, so he can use that with the Gyrar Heirloom as well. That's pretty nifty. Um, it looks like that's the only thing it gives him that'll come in handy here, since it does not give power attack. Um, let's see. So we see Lost Bride comes in. Oh, Secrets of the Suns. Was that out of... Icefall? Why is... Oh, wait. No, we're looking at Irish Punk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Oh, so Cyanuk spent react backwards with uh, Savrock's ability to, to cancel the entire Secrets of the Suns. Uh, if you weren't here earlier, let's take a look at Savrock. He lets all of his guys just run away. If he's your Warlord, uh, all your Nothrogs have your the ability to spend react. When this character is targeted with a melee strike or action, move backwards one rank to cancel it. So that canceled the entire Secrets of the Suns action. So that's six strikes that he didn't get, which is really unfortunate for him. Uh, we see a trade route out of Savrock as well. So the items he's going to pull are Nodwick, Monkey's Paws, and probably King's Lady would be my guess. And Irish Punk. Yep, there's King's Lady. So Irish Punk is going to have to choose one to go into his hand. Uh, those are... Uh, Nodwick isn't necessarily a combo piece. That can get back the portable hole to draw more cards, which is good. But those other two are just going to be equipped to Covet Tree Razor... Uh, Karachaguk, the Reedy area, something that's going to be hitting for extra wounds already. <clears throat> so Sin Marduk can still kill a Thrall to do a melee strike. But his Secrets of the Sun's plan definitely got nerfed. Um, I mean, if he has, let's see, two cards in hand, I would imagine at least one of them is a Daemon. So he's going to want to be killing... Um, I would think, oh, well, he moved the Plentiful back, so maybe he has a Pagophorus or a level 4 Daemon that he can potentially play this turn. Um, otherwise, he could kill Devoted and do a strike. Um, Secrets of the Suns didn't happen because Savruk, uh, uh, when this character is targeted with a melee striker action, move forward or backward one rank to cancel it. So since um, the Cyanook was targeted with the melee strike from Secrets of the Suns, which is also an action, you can actually spend React backwards to cancel the entire strike. Uh, we learned this rule in canceling uh, AoE effects in a match. I don't remember who I was playing against, but it was the October Battlefields. Uh, I had Blackwind the Dragon, which does a spend order to make a whole rank do a DC check. Uh, Alexa Ginnicourt can redirect and cancel strikes, and we had to check with Iceman, and he said uh, once she cancels one part of it, it actually cancels the entire thing. Uh, so the same is true with Secrets of the Suns, to where Cyanux spent React backwards, and then stunned up to cancel the entire Secrets of the Suns effect. At least that's the way I understand it. It might be slightly different with melee strikes, but I believe they're playing it the proper way here. Um, so we see Bokos, as I thought, for uh, Wad here. Then he's got a Covet Tree Razor in rank 5. So he does not have the Serene combo piece. He's going to play Dragon Sword to try and find it. Uh, Icefall does have the Serene combo piece, but no Covet Tree Razor. Um, the two decks can work together uh, in multiplayer, but not in the sense that Serene and Covet and two different armies can work together. Icefall is just going to stun... Celtic says it only cancels one strike. Um, I guess I could ask in the rules channel of Discord. The thing says, Blackwind is different than Secrets, though. Normally, me melee strikes are treated differently than actions like Allahan, Bramble, or Blackwind. That is entirely possible, because that would make a huge difference in this game. Um, obviously, it's, I think, way too late to go back and fix that, but uh, I can at least ask in the rules and maybe get a ruling before it happens again. Uh, which Warlord is it? Savrak? I can type so well. Only two typos. Okay, so I'll see if we hear a response from that to at least know uh, later in the match if it comes up. Because I would imagine at level 9, Sid Marduk is probably running three copies of Secrets of the Suns. Because that definitely seemed to be their understanding here. Oh, was that it canceled the whole action? Um, so... 
Lost Bride stunned all the way up, just trying to hold ranks and making room to pop out the figurine of trickery for Savruk. Um, let's see, Wad popped his limited wish. So he figured he's either going to... It's right at the end of the tournament, might as well use it. Ride or die against Sin Marduk. If he doesn't take him out here, he doesn't get to use the limited wish at all. Kafka's going to spend, I would assume, a suspend order for loyalty's reward. Yep. Okay, so he didn't spend the Bokos since he can just play it from discard pile with that. So I would imagine that's what he grabbed with the limited wish. Um, so when it's all said and done, that limited wish was essentially two spend orders to draw four cards. So that's not too bad. Um, and I think he's hoping he can get the Serene since he does have the legal ranks to grab it, or uh, rather to put it into play. I don't know if this is something, like, I should pop in and say it doesn't cancel the whole Secrets of the Suns, or what? Because that could make a big difference for the Nothrog here. They're already at a disadvantage playing against the Daemon Lord, for sure, but that does give them an advantage here. What do you think, chat? Do we do we let them know, or do we just let it play out, see how 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 it works? So Icefall now has Karachaguk. Also, that is why Irish Punk spent back. Um, Josh K is responding. Sweet. That's why he spent back the Plentiful to at least put a little bit of meat between. Uh, Marduk and uh, their combo pieces. It's the more specific, so no, just the singular strike. <laughs> Wizap just hopes both teams have fun. <laughs> yeah. I will say something in untap. Sin Marduk could actually be in big trouble here, especially if Icefall is able to find his Serene as well. He did use Bokos to remove Loyalty's reward from the game, so we'll see next turn if he got it or not. But now, Monkey's Paws on Karachaguk, so he can swing three strikes. One will go at the Plentiful, but two are going to go at Sin Marduk. Um, now, what's interesting is that Sin can at least... Uh, Kill one amends since Serene allows him to target back ranks with strikes. Um, so he can kill amends to do a full attack and just kind of chew through Icefall's army from the back. Yeah, Irish Punk says they played it cancelled everything. Let me reply quick. Uh, chat, what happened to the other amends? I must have missed that while I was looking for rulings and whatnot. Did he kill it with Sin Marduk to try and do a melee strike for an additional rank away? Uh, or did something else end up killing it? Hmm. 
let's let's look back it's possible it's further back than I remember wad played a dragon's horde yeah I missed it too I I don't know when it happened it's it's probably further back yeah, that's the downside of this Triclaw start. I mean, the Nothrogs don't even have to attack those to move Sin Marduk up. They're just going to come from the back. And having two decks that do that against Sin Marduk is actually going to be really difficult. It's not looking great for him at the moment. Um, Karachiguk looks like he's swinging with Serene. First strike hit plentiful. Second strike, I assume, is going on Sin Marduk. Uh, no amends. Okay, I was going to say that would probably be a smart play to take that out. Um, now Sin Marduk is going to be very vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, Wizap, all the cards are doing the things. This is So let me summarize this for you. This is a really big, really scary card. And these two smaller, less scary cards are teaming up against the big scary one to try and win. Most people think the big scary card's a bad guy, but he's on my team, so I say he's just misunderstood. Uh, but that's going to hit for three wounds on Sin Marduk. Even if he's able to spend up next turn, I think it's probably over. Because um, then if he spends up, that's going to be his last rank then. Um, the Karachigut can still go after him. He's got three strikes to try and finish him off. Definitely not looking good for him. I wonder why he didn't try to repost that. He does have the Annals of Triumph. It's possible he just forgot. Uh, yeah, he also could have stealthed one as well. He has medicine. So three feats off of that that are usable right now. Uh, Kothka going to use his order, though, so it doesn't look like Irish Punk is going to do any of them. I think the Nothrog are definitely going to be able to pull this out. Uh, is Kafka reveal or just look? It's just look, okay. Um, and they are discarded. I'm not sure why he put them into that little stack. I would just peep five off the top. Interesting little face down pile mechanic I honestly didn't know existed. So next turn, we have Serene Karachiguk right onto Sin Marduk. Oh, this is huge, too. I didn't even think about the points implications. Mercenaries are in the lead right now, but if the Nothrog take out Sin Marduk, they are going to get 50 points. That would put them well in the lead. No Serene yet from Icefall, even with six cards in hand. Um, <clears throat> but it's possible Kothka can grab it as well. It'd be crazy if he went through. He's got 25 cards left in deck, go through half his deck, and not find the Serene. Because, I mean, they have to be running three of them. It's what their whole deck revolves around, and that's why they draw to get to it. But if you remember round one, uh, it was Josh King and I don't remember who else versus um, uh, Wyvern. And they could not find the Vorpal Blade in like, it was in the last 12 cards or something obnoxious. I see journal entry on COVID. That's interesting. So I wonder if they're just going to grab another loyalties reward to set up for next turn. Maybe uh, meet at the end to try and get stuff this turn, but I don't think they want to give Sin Marduk any chance to uh, get out of this by drawing more cards. So it doesn't look like Sin Marduk has killed a Thrall for a melee strike this turn either. I mean, he could kill Devoted, try and take out Kargreg. That's not the bad army, though. You have to go for, like, the Stun Cyanook. 
try and take him out with a strike, and then you can do a range strike, maybe take out another one, drop a daemon. That seems like the best play at this point. Otherwise, he has medicine still, too. Um, but only... Annals doesn't give a hit point, does it? That's uh, It's not a tome. Oh, it does give a hit point. Okay. So if he's able to successfully medicine, he would need a 7 plus 5 skill. He would need a 2 to successfully medicine. Um, so that would make it so he's not just one shot next turn. So if he remembers next turn that he has stealth... There's the Serene. Okay. And he comes into play in rank 5 because of the Karachaguk in Icefall's army, making him enter play one rank higher. Going to put the Wand of Negation on Serene now. So there goes any chance of medicine. Yeah, he just played it and used it. So it seems like Irish Punk forgetting he has medicine. Uh, Annals of Triumph completely blanked now. So he can still kill a Thrall for a strike um, and use the Gyrar Heirloom, but it doesn't seem like he's going to opt to do that either. And now Serene going to do his thing to try and finish off Sin. So now that he... Oh, he played a Karachigak too, which I didn't even mention. Or notice, frankly. He was kind of playing pretty fast there. Um, I think that's going to miss... Or does it hit? Does Gyrar Heirloom give AC? I don't think it does. That looks like it's game. Awad's rolling again, so maybe not. Annals is blanked. There's a plus 15 roll to 2, that's a 17. I think that hits. Oh, but it's only 2. But Annals is blank. So, yeah, okay. He put the two wound counters on. So, Sin Marduk falls to the mighty Nothrog. Sly Fox is going to be so happy when he wakes up tomorrow morning. <laughs> Time difference. He doesn't even know what's going on. I missed the bodyguard play as well. So, just making it less likely that they're going to go after Kothka. So, the Nothrog Lieutenant lives on. He cracks the... Uh, Limited Wish, not going to take it into the last round, finds the Loyalties Reward, gets four more cards, and is eventually able to find Serene and take out Irish Punk uh, and Sin Marduk. So a couple misplays. Secrets of the Suns was a pretty big misplay, but uh, all three parties were involved. I don't think there was any ill will there at all. Just I mean, It was a mistake. Mistakes happen. And he just would have taken out some first ranks, um... Gunda, I mean, this was all turn one, so Gunda would have survived uh, through the turn. So I don't personally think that would have made a big difference, but unless he was able to drop some daemons, it doesn't look like it, though. He had a time stop. Frankly, I don't know why he didn't do that first action unless he drew it off the meat at the end, but still, I don't know. Because, yeah, Sin Marduk can play wizard spells, too. So it doesn't look like he had any daemons in his hand. <clears throat> no, none at all. He had Annals of Triumph, Time Stop, Obli oh, Obliterate. But he has to be in the front rank for Obliterate as well. Um, I'm, I'm still confused what caused him to be spent in rank 3 uh, very early in the game. He had to destroy the Weeping Crescent to ready back there. Uh, otherwise, he could have gotten up to rank 1 uh, and used the Immense to start doing strikes that way too, so... I don't know if that was a mistake or just something I missed, but it had a pretty big impact on the game as well. Uh, whether or not, uh, regardless of what happened there, he still wouldn't have been able to play the Obliterate this turn. That would have ended up being a dead card, but uh, Time Stop, if he had that, he could have gotten up right away. So let's see, Annals of Triumph, Obliterate, Time Stop, Gyrar Heirloom. What were his last two cards? He had Secrets of the Suns. And I guess he drew a Devoted. I thought one had died, and he searched for it. But uh, five-card hand, got the one card off meat at the end, so I guess he had a Devoted in hand as well. So that is going to do it. Sin Marduk is dead. The Accordlands freed from Daemon Lord rule. See, that's uh, Exhaustion was my first thought, but I didn't see it in any discard pile. He has the face-down cards. Oh, the one they grabbed on the map. Okay. 
That's why I didn't see it in the discard pile. Thank you, Celtic. I did not realize that that was something they were doing for this match. So that definitely a big game changer. That's why. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm glad you're here. You got the uh, you got all of the rules knowledge. With you were right with Secrets of the Suns, and you got the exhaustion. So thanks a lot for being here. Um, but with that, I'm gonna wrap up the stream. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, it was definitely a spectacle. We thought Sin Marduk would have a run for his money here. He definitely did. Uh, so I think Nothrogs, after this round, firmly in the lead now. Uh, still potentially a little bit more content for round 7 to come, depending on what happens tonight or tomorrow morning. But likely the next thing you'll see from me is going to be round 8, the final round of Strategic. So stay tuned for that. I'll be hitting coverage as hard as I possibly can this weekend. I only need two more stream hours to hit affiliate, so I will definitely hit that before the tournament ends. Thanks again for coming out, and I'll see you guys later.